In this video, we will look at the essentials of sound recording for your production. We'll do an overview of sound recording setup on the Z150. Take a brief look at setup on the Zoom H4n sound recorder. We'll cover setting up your Rode wireless lavalier kits, setting up a shotgun and boom pole kit. So here we have the Sony Z150. And here, if we lift up this audio level panel, we'll have access to all our controls. The top row is all input one settings, and the second row is all input two settings. Here for input one, in the first area we see line, mic, and mic plus 48V. Primarily, you're gonna be setting this to mic. Line is if you're coming in from a soundboard, a mixer, and mic plus 48V is if you're using a microphone that has phantom power. That is, it pulls power from the camera battery to power the microphone rather than using an internal battery. Over here we have internal microphone, external microphone, and mic shoe. The mic shoe refers to the hot shoe that's on the front on the top of the camera. We won't be using that. You want to set it, if you're coming in off one external input, we, you want to set input one to external. And if you're using a second in, in external input, you want to make sure that your second input is external as well. However, if you're only doing one input that's external, you want to set your input two to internal. So we'll do that here. So this is external, this is internal. So if you ever have a mic failure in the field, then you have the backup of using the camera mic itself. And finally, we have our pan pots for audio levels. Here you wanna start at five, and as you monitor and adjust your levels in the signal, you wanna make your adjustments to the pan pots. So now let's take a look at our inputs. On this side of the camera, we have our input one and input two. They're both XLR connections. So X, XLR connections are these three pins right here. And you wanna make sure you are putting the three pins correctly. They should be at the bottom. And when you push in, you should hear a click. Now that is gonna be a secure connection. So to release the XLR, you wanna push on the button on the top where it says push, and that's your XLR cable release. And you push and pull up, and now you could securely release your cable without damaging it. Okay, here we have our headphone jack. You want to take your 3.5 millimeter headphone plug and plug it in and monitor at all times, whenever you're recording or adjusting your levels, you should always have your headphones on. And now let's take a look at your VU meter and uh, some of the settings within the menu system. So here in the lower right hand corner, you can see you have a small VU meter at all times if you have the display up. But if you wanna get a better look at your levels on the outside of the camera, we have the status button. You press the status button and now we could see our channel two has our internal microphone within the camera and our channel one has no levels because we set it to external, but we don't have an external microphone connected to the camera as at the moment. Okay, so now let's take a look at some of the menu settings. So we'll click menu and here we could take a look at our audio set. And here we have our volume for speaker and down here, our headphone out. 
that will be in stereo. Now you want to make sure it's kept in stereo. And when you put your headphones on, you'll hear input one on your left ear and input two on your right ear. And for first time users, that could be a little jarring. But this is so we have our signals separate. So when it comes to post production, you could adjust the levels independently of one another. And here we also have internal mic set. And where you could adjust the sensitivity. And internal microphone windscreen. And finally, XLR set. Um, I'm showing you this, but you really don't want to adjust your settings. Remember, whenever you receive the camera or whenever you're starting off, you should always go to other and to uh, initialize to reset to the factory default settings. And you want to go to initialize. And this reboots the camera. So you shouldn't have to manipulate any of the internal settings outside of the speaker volume. Uh, all the microphone input settings are on the external of the camera. Now let's take a look at the Zoom H4n Handy Recorder. This is a sound recorder. It's powered by two AA batteries on the back. On one side, we have our headphones our headphone volume, and our power. It's going to say no card. And on the opposite side, we have our SD card input, our recording volume, and our jog shuttle and menu button. So this, we, we could press the menu button and get to the menu system, but we, we want to make our selections and, and navigate using the jog dial and then jumping deeper into the menu system by pressing in. This is actually a dial and a button. So you could press in. And now we'll take a look at that. So I'm going to press the menu button. And using the jog dial, we'll take a look at uh, our menu settings here. And just shuffling through. So we have folder, file, input, input settings. We have, we could set a low cut filter, uh, set our monitor, a link between input one and two, a mono mix, Phantom Power plus 48V SD card. So this is where we format our SD card. So it's menu SD card and we press in with our jog dial and we go to format. Now again, this, whenever you're formatting any card or, or any media um, from a, a recorder or a camera, it's going to wipe out all contents on your card. So that's why we get this prompt, are we sure? So if you're not sure, if you think you have some content on there, double check first, because this will erase everything to give it the, uh, the system file hierarchy for, uh, 
for recording the files. Okay. And then next, um, I'm going to tilt this up. And you could see we have two inputs. We have input one and input two. So input one, it will take XLR, or it will also take quarter inch right in the center. So you could see there's the three pins for the XLR, but in the very center, um, it'll take a quarter inch phone jack. Um, both are professional connections. Now, key to recording is making sure we're setting our input correctly. Right now, it's set to mic, but where we want it to be is input one and two. And when we set it to input one and two, we're telling the recorder not to come from the microphones up here. That's the, the internal, the onboard microphones. We want to come from input one and input two. And again, you'd have your headphones plugged in and you'd monitor. And you could always tap a microphone um, to see which source you're coming from. And next, we're going to hit record. Now, very important when recording with these is when you hit record once, these numbers on the transport do not move. So this is monitor mode. Whenever it's blinking, it's considered monitor mode. That allows you to have your headphones on to check the levels. So if I switch this to internal microphone, we could see our levels there. And it's not going to record until I hit record once more. And we see these numbers move. So now we know that we're recording. And I'll hit stop. But if we're coming from an external source, you want to make sure you are connected. And I will demonstrate that here. You want to make sure you have your three pin XLR. And now we're going to take a look at the Rode wireless lavalier kit. Here we have the transmitter indicated by the T and the receiver indicated by the R. The lavalier with the clip on mic and the screw on mount screws onto the transmitter. This would go onto a belt or some clothing out of sight. The clip on part would clip close to the collar or the lapel. And the receiver would be receiving what the transmitter sends out. And here we have an XLR to mini or XLR to eighth inch, 3.5 millimeter, um, this headphone connector here. And this also has a screw on mount, so it's secure. So you wanna plug it into the side, screw it on, and then plug the XLR into the camera or the recorder, whichever device you're using to record your sound. On the back, we have our belt clip on our transmitter. And on our receiver, we'll see that this is considered a cold shoe mount. This will um, mount onto the top of the camera. Hold on one moment. So if you have a camera like this, this is considered where the shoe would mount. If it's powered by the camera, it's considered a hot shoe. If it's just there to mount and powered separately, it's considered a cold shoe. And so this would mount onto the top, and then this part would plug XLR in to XLR input one. So it mounts here, the cable comes down and around to input one. Okay, so to power these, you want to press the button in and slide the back all the way down until you see where you could put in um, the two double A's. So you need a pair of double A's for the transmitter and a pair of double A's for the receiver. Whenever you're doing any type of recording, 
that requires double A's, I strongly recommend uh, that you triple it. So if you here we need four, um, depending if you're going to be doing an hour interview, uh, you know, bring an extra set and then a spare backup set. So, you know, you have eight, possibly 12 to, to 16 batteries. Um, if you don't have that available, maybe bring an extra set and something like this where it's a, it's a charger. So you could, while one set is in the, uh, in the transmitter and receiver, you could charge your double A's, um, your spare double A's and then swap them out. But you'll, sometimes you'll hear your sound drift off or you'll get some clipping. That's why it's important to always have your headphones on. Um, these are wireless. So while they're fully powered, they may have a distance of 30, 60 feet, but that'll start tapering off as the uh, transmitter or the receiver starts losing power over time. And that could lead to some clipping of your sound or the quality diminishing. Okay, so once they're in, um, there's a few things to the setup. Uh, by default, these should be linked together. But if they're not linked together for any reason, you have these two red link buttons that you hold down one and the other and then link these up to communicate to each other. But very important is uh, here we have on our transmitter, you see it's zero and that's positive 10 dB and positive 10 dB and positive 20 dB. So where you wanna start out with on the transmitter, on the receiver and on your camera or your recorder is the default setting. So on the cameras, the Z150s, I believe it's five on the pan pots. And here we wanna be at zero. And here on the receiver, we wanna be on zero. Now, unlike the transmitter, the receiver you could see has negative 10 and negative 20. So what does that mean? In a practical sense, if you're speaking with someone and they have a soft voice and it's hard to really get the detail of their voice and you're listening over your headphones and you're looking at your VU meter and everything seems to be a little low, well, then you could go to your transmitter and increase it to positive 10 dB and then continue the test. How was your trip in today for the interview? And at plus 10, maybe their levels are better, but maybe that's not quite enough. If you need to increase them more, increase them to positive 20. That said, if this is hot, if you start getting levels that are way too hot, do not compensate it by changing um, your receiver to negative 10, negative 20. What you want to do is go back to your transmitter and reduce the signal there. Because um, if you think of the, the signal as a kind of a flow, we're increasing the flow here, but if we reduce it after increasing it, it's going to have a negative effect. You're, you're probably going to introduce some unnecessary noise to the signal that wasn't there previously. So it's always best to start at zero increase and conversely maybe you have this set to zero and you have somebody who speaks very loud and has more of an announcer voice and or or very strong deep sound that you have to bring down how do you do that well you keep your transmitter at zero 
and you bring your receiver down. So that's where you would set your receiver to negative 10, then do a test. So what did you have this morning for breakfast? And you have your interviewee or your talent, your, your subject is answering, and maybe that negative 10 was just enough, or maybe you have to go a little bit further to negative 20. So you want to set your transmitter first, then your receiver, and then you very slightly fine tune with your camera or your sound recorder. What you don't want to do is have these levels on your transmitter and receiver all over the place and you compensate that with the recorder because your transmitter could be too hot then you could drop your that signal too low. And if you just judge from the VU meter coming into the camera or your recorder, the levels may look fine, but you might have an overmodulated signal that's really low and it's hard to make out. Um, so you, you really need to make sure that you're going step by step, increasing and decreasing so if you're bringing in another subject and in another interviewee and you're using the same wireless system, you want to make sure that you set everything back to zero and start over again with your settings. And now let's look at the, uh, the power. So we'll power. And whenever you're powering any type of sound equipment, any type of sound recording, audio equipment, we usually have to hold the power button for a few seconds. That's a fail safe so you don't accidentally turn off the power. Or if you have someone with the transmitter and, uh, and they accidentally hit the button, it's not going to kill the mic on you. So that's the, we set up the transmitter and then we're going to fire up the receiver. So here we could see it says two and two. That's a match. And I'm going to take the lavalier, plug it in, and tighten up the screw. And for our receiver, this part goes into the camera. Clips in like so. And you, sometimes when you're clipping this in, you want to make sure that you're not clipping it where it's visible. Or if you, you know, if I clip it here, this cable gets tucked in. Okay. And so it reduces visibility. But right now, what you're hearing, I'll drop down. Right now, what you're hearing is the sound uh, recording from the lavalier. And uh, it's the wireless system. Now, one thing to be aware of when recording with these is not to have the transmitter and the receiver in uh, relatively close proximity. Um, also, if your subject moves around a lot, you know, you're gonna get like fabric motion um, picked up, any scratching on the fabric, any type of movement uh, gets picked up. Okay, now we're gonna take a look at our boom mic kit. So with this kit, we get this is our shotgun microphone, and the shotgun microphone is uh, is known for its hypercardioid uh, pickup pattern. So if you think in terms of uh, camera lenses, this would be our telephoto lens. This would let us zoom in and focus on our subject while not picking up um, or muffling the sounds. Um, off to the sides. So here the pickup pattern, it's cardioid, so it's heart shaped, but it's oblong. So it's, um, it's going to be hyper focused. It's going to pick up clean sound wherever it's pointed to. And because this mic is sensitive and it will be on a boom pole, we need this. This is called a shock mount. And here we could see within it, it has this rubber band system um, that suspends the microphone from the outside and the rubber absorbs any type of vibration or movement that uh, could transfer from the boom pole 
into the microphone um, as as uh, unwanted sound. Then, if we're shooting exteriors, um, if we're shooting exteriors, we have um, this windscreen. This particular type of windscreen is known as a dead cat um, uh, within the industry. And here we have our boom pole. It's telescopic, so lefty loosey, you loosen uh, each level. I always recommend starting at um, the the level that has the most girth to it, and then extending to the more narrower um, levels telescopically. Um, this also has an XLR cable built into the boom pole itself. If for any reason that XLR cable would fail, then what you would do is use an, uh, a spare XLR or a secondary XLR and wrap it around kind of like a, a candy cane or barber pole and put a little gaffer tape along. And you want to do that once it's extended to the length that you're going to use it. Um, and uh, in that way, you know, if there's failure to the, the in-pole cable, it's not going to, you know, end your production. You could still move on forward. And this is our XLR. So this would go from the boom pole to our recorder. Um, you know, sometimes some people have uh, field mixers that this would go to. If you have a um, uh, someone doing sound on your shoot, they'd be looking down at the levels at all times while doing boom operation, or those could be separate roles. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so let's, let's look at the setup. Okay. So with this shotgun microphone, um, this particular one ha takes a single double A battery. However, uh, many of these, uh, microphones, don't have battery within the, the capsule, uh, or it has dual functionality where they, these shotgun microphones can take plus 48 V, which is phantom power. So it pulls power from your recorder. Now that could be your sound recorder. That could be your camera, but yeah, to, to activate that, you need to Activate it on your recording device to send that plus 48 V to power the microphone itself. Um, if you are using a battery within this, uh, I don't recommend using the plus 48 V. Uh, you know, if the battery dies or there's some type of failure, then by all means, using plus 48 V will diminish the length uh, that you could use your recorder or your camera because it is pulling additional power from it. So in terms of battery life, just be aware of that. So we have our shotgun microphone and this mounts in like so. Now when putting our microphone into our shock mount, you want to make sure that the bands are fully onto the, uh, the shock mount itself. Uh, and Take the, the part, the capsule that has the XLR, and you want to push and twist. And try not to overstretch the, uh, the band in here to cause any type of damage to the band. Okay. And so there's your shock mount. And so if I tap onto this, you'll probably hear a little bit, but if I tap onto the boom pole, um, you know, it's going to diminish it. It's, uh, you know, this isn't a cure-all. This is a way to remediate any additional sounds. It's not going to completely eliminate it. And that is how we put on our dead cat, the windscreen. So I'm going to swing the pole around and be aware of where the threading is. And right now I'm twisting the pole around 
to mount the shock mount onto the pole. And it's secure. Okay. Okay. This other screw to tighten. And if we want to adjust the pitch uh, that we're, we're using, you could loosen and tighten this back up. Now that we have it where we want it, let's plug in our XLR. Okay. And this is how we extend lefty loosey and then tighten back up. Now, one trick to holding a boom pole properly is hold it loosely in both your hands and gradually bring your hands closer together while keeping the boom pole balanced. And then you'll find the boom pole's center of gravity. And you'll hit a point where you could hold the entire boom pole with one or two fingers, which is a great place to start because you could hold it very easily. If you hold it at the end, it's going to be extremely heavy. But if you hold it here in the center, then you could easily pivot. You could pivot, you know, you could come in under your subject and pivot or over and again you want to focus the microphone at your subject when they're speaking and sometimes when you're doing boom operation you have to move between multiple subjects so uh but this is much easier to hold like this over a period of an hour shoot than if I was battling with it at the very end, because this I have to do two handed. This, it's you work smarter, not harder. And, uh, and that's the best way to hold a boom pole. Or you get a boom pole holder and you mount it onto uh, a C stand or a tripod uh, mounts. It, uh, if you need one on set. But if you do that, you're not going to have that flexibility of having someone in real time moving the microphone at your subject. At the very end, you want to make sure that you're plugging in your XLR to the bottom of the boom pole where this feeds. And then the other end goes into your camera or your recorder.